Now we get to sort of the, the heart of his analysis of the origin of language. And his basic thesis here is that language originates with the need to express love. So I said in the beginning, you know, he's this, this, this Frenchman, he really wants to focus on love as the origin of language, and he does, right? And he says, but in the arid places where water could be had only from wells, people had to rejoin one another to sink the wells, or at least to agree upon their use. Such must have been the origin of societies and languages in warm countries. And you, you notice, again, he's giving us the origin of language and society in a single story. And then he gives us this little story, right? So he tells about, you know, he's, he's talking about people in the desert, and they don't have enough water, so they have to sink wells. And there are not many of them, so people from different families would have to, if they're isolated families, they have to always get together at the well in order to get water, and they run into each other. And so this is, that is where the first ties were formed among families, at the well. There were the first rendezvous of the two sexes. Girls would come to seek water for the household. Young men would come to water their herds. Their eyes accustomed to the same sights since infancy began to see with increased pleasure. Again, that's this indication of when they're in their families, they're only seeing the same things. This is the first opportunity they have to see different things but accept those different things as something they don't have to attack right away. The heart is moved by these novel objects. An unknown attraction renders it less savage. It feels pleasure at not being alone. So there's, there's a new experience of strangeness that's linked with pleasure rather than just fear. Imperceptibly, water becomes more necessary. The livestock become thirsty more often which is, those are the excuses for coming to the well more, right? One would arrive in haste and leave with regret. In that happy age when, uh, oh, when nothing marked the hours, nothing would oblige one to count them, and the only measure of time would be the alternation of amusement and boredom. Under old oaks, conquerors of the years, an ardent youth will gradually lose his ferocity. Little by little, they became less shy with each other. In trying to make oneself understood, one learns to explain oneself. So here is the point of language. You've got the young man at the well, sees the young woman. He wants to somehow express something. He wants to express his love. That's all of a sudden where he develops language, right? He can't just do it with gestures. He's got to speak. And that's, the, for him, the origin of language. There, too, the original festivals developed. Feet skipped with joy. Earnest gestures no longer sufficed. You couldn't use gestures to express your love, being accompanied by an impassioned voice. Pleasure and desire mingled and were felt together. There at last was the true cradle of nations. From the pure crystal of the fountains flow the first fires of love. That's his story about the origin of language, which is also then the story of the origin of love. And that's, I think that's the interesting part, right? That he's, he's giving us, yeah, well, the origin of society, the origin of language, and the origin of love all in the same place. It's the same event. I want to back up a moment because he does back up. Because what did people do before that, right? What did people do before there was the well? How did they get together? And he says, what then? Before that time, did men spring from the earth? Did generations succeed each other without any union of the sexes and without anyone being understood? Obviously, people must have reproduced before that. No, there were families. So he says there were families, but there were no nations. There were domestic languages, but there were no popular ones. So what is he saying? That isolated families did not lead, need language. Why did they not need love? He says there were marriages, but there was no love at all. Each family was self-sufficient and perpetuated itself exclusively by inbreeding. So there was only incest, basically, right? And you didn't need love for that. Children of the same parents grew up together and gradually they found ways of expressing themselves to each other. The sexes became obvious with age. Natural inclination sufficed to unite them. Instinct held the place of passion. Habit held the place of preference. So he's saying that before love there was instinct and before preference, before feelings, there was just habit. And again, you know, he doesn't like habit, right? Habit is just incest, basically. It's another, it's another way of thinking about habit as doing everything as you were born to do it 
and then that's basically another word for him, essentially here, for incest. They became husband and wife without ceasing to be brother and sister. There would be nothing sim stimulating enough in that to loosen the tongue, nothing to provoke accents of ardent passion, often enough to conventionalize them, and it was possible for men, men to say enough about their rare and minor needs to enable them to work together. One would start the basin of a fountain, and the other would follow through and finish it, often without their coming to any kind of agreement, sometimes even without their seeing each, without them, their seeing each other. So he's imagining this primitive state of families they were isolated, so therefore they would, had no interaction with other families. So therefore, it was the brothers and sisters that would have to get together. They wouldn't have to speak to each other because it was just all through instinct and habit. And also, even things like building, building a fountain, they didn't need words because apparently you would just naturally understood what, stand what was going on just with, with gestures, you might not even have to speak to each other in order to figure out what was going on. So here he's, he's telling us about the limitations of habit, but also telling us about how this situation of habit was a stable one. He's saying that it's a stable system because you've got these isolated families, they're all self-sufficient, they can depend upon instinct and habit to fulfill all of their needs and they don't need to go outside of the family, and they are therefore also don't need language. So he's saying that there's, you know, there's, a, there's a drawback to habit because it's limiting, but there's a kind of stability to it as long as the families remain isolated from each other. But that's the problem, right? Because once there's interaction, then there's, there's this, this, this problem. And, so, and he has this footnote. So I'm gonna, this is the footnote to the to the thing about the, the, the brothers and sisters always getting together, he says, the first men would have had to marry their sisters. In the simplicity of primitive customs, this practice would easily perpetuate itself as long as families remained isolated and even after the reunion of the most ancient peoples. Right? So isolated families, incest, no problem at all functions. Everybody's in their own families and they're, they're just continuing the inbreeding. But the law that prohibits it is no less sacred for its human ordination. So then he says, well, you know, this is a, we don't like incest, though, right? And this is why. And he says, those who see it only in terms of the bond it forms among families fail to see its most important aspect. Given the intimacy that domestic life is bound to establish between the sexes, from the moment such a sacred law ceases to appeal to the heart and mind, there will be no more integrity among men, and the most terrifying practices would soon bring about the destruction of mankind. So it's not so clear. He doesn't really explain what the issue is here, but uh, you know, I'm kind of extrapolating. So the final claim here is that once there is society, incest would bring about the destruction of mankind. So he's, he's actually looking at incest from two perspectives. The one perspective is that primitive state when all these families were living isolated from each other, and you had incest, and you had habit, and it all functioned because none of the families interacted with each other, then you, you didn't have any conflicts. Because if, if they in, did interact with each, with each other, they would immediately start fighting with each other, right? Because of they, they don't know the strangeness. But what he's saying here is that incest creates a lack of integrity because once you are in society and families are interacting with each other, if you return to incest, you're going to go back to habit isolation and fear of others, but in a situation where you're not isolated from each other, and so therefore then you're going to, you're going to have all of these conflicts and antagonisms and wars that'll destroy mankind. Right? So he's, so he's, he's saying he's, you know, he's giving an explanation first for why incest, incest functioned in the beginning well, but then he also wants to be careful to say, well, but this is not, uh, this is not an affirmation of the advantages of incest, incest. This is just an explanation for how it functioned before. If we had incest now, it would lead to all these horrible effects because we're no longer isolated from each other in our individual families, and therefore we're always interacting with each other. If we went back to incest, we would be interacting with each other from a place of fear and antagonism and no longer from a place of looking for interactions and being able to empathize with other people, using our passions in order to create bonds of love, that's the problem with, with incest, that it's basically, it's, it's anti-love. It's, you're, you're, you're back with instinct rather than love as, as the basis of reproduction. 
And so he's, he's, he's got this story then of mankind in which you, you're replacing gesture with language. You're also replacing families as the basis of society to nations that include lots of families. And you're also replacing then instinct. Wait, did I say instinct with love? No, yes, instinct with love. You have instinct and then as, as the basis of getting together, and then you have love, which requires then interaction between families that's a, you know, a, a happy interaction rather than an antagonistic one.